Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. You'll remember that the other day when the Bank of Canada made their interest rate announcement, I told you that it was didn't make any sense, and really what they were trying to avoid saying is that they're worried about a recession. And some more of that has come to light today as Christy Freeland made one of the most bizarre uh, roundabout ways to make an announcement. She took a bunch of reporters through a building that just got finished because of some loan that they got from the CH CMHC and then came down to the well-prepared region and got the questions that were well-prepared asked. And I can show you that it was a bunch of theater, by the way, that they kind of missed their cue. You know how they, like they always do, like they, they just assume that nobody's paying attention to them or that we're not clever enough to see it. However, before I get into it, I would encourage you all to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share this channel with all of your socials. I have memberships if you'd like to support the channel that way. And I have a GoFundMe so that I can get new equipment. Okay, so like I was saying, they were making an announcement from this building about condominiums and how they're going to build 300 purpose-built rentals and blah, blah, blah. And then after all of these announcements, Christy Freeland stands up and says, oh, as of August 1st, we're going to allow people who buy an apartment, a first time home buyer, which means because you're a first time home buyer, you'll be eligible for the CMHC, which is, a, which is important, right? Because CMHC loans are all protected. So if you go to the bank with a CMHC in your back pocket and the 5% down the minimum requirement, well, the bank is going to give you a 30 year mortgage at four and a half percent interest. And they want you to believe that this is in your best interest, that paying you another, paying another five years of mortgage payments, instead of it being 25, it's now 30, is doing you a favor. This, they're saying, is a benchmark to how they're making progress on the housing crisis in Canada. I don't agree with them. I think that if you were trying to make progress, you'd be saying how you now everybody's eligible for a 20 year mortgage. Five years would come off, not added on. And f extra five years at what's looking like a fluctuating interest rate. But out of the gate, the first five years is gonna be locked in at four and change. So don't worry about it though, because you're allowed to take $60,000 out of your RSPs and put it toward the down payment as long as you pay those RSPs back within the first five years. I mean, the, the, the concept that there, this is somehow making apartments or condos available to the 20 the something who just happens to have 60 G's locked down in an RSP, as well as 5% down they need to make the CMHC, as well as all the projected payments that there will be required, as well as the monthly condo fees. At least when you buy a house, if you don't mow the lawn, you don't mow the lawn. With the condo fees, you got to pay that no matter what. But don't worry about it. They're making progress. Of course, it's all just theater. And I'll show you how there's going to be theater here in a minute. This guy behind her is uh, the, the guy without the tie on is a member of parliament for the region that she's in. It's important because the, she's going to make get a staged question asked. And then she turns too quickly to without thinking about the second question being asked. And the second question gets asked. She turns again with an unspoken uh, cue, these two switch places. You'll see. All right, let's watch it. Calvi Leon from the Toronto Star. Um, Minister Freeland, how do you feel about some of your colleagues believing you should be shuffled out of the finance portfolio in order to signal a major new direction for the government? Uh, thank you for the question. Um, I absolutely take the point of view of our caucus, of my caucus colleagues, really, really seriously. Our government is our caucus and our government's policies need to be based on conversations within caucus. For me, my focus is on working hard to deliver for Canadians every single day. It is on housing, building more homes faster and putting in place measures like the 30-year mortgage amortization. So that's where my focus is. It's on Canada and Canadians and working hard with all my caucus colleagues to deliver that. Do you still feel comfortable keeping your job as finance minister? I feel I have the support I need to do my job and to focus on 
what my job is, which is delivering for Canada and Canadians. Thank you. Sorry, Jamie. Uh, if I may, I am one of those caucus colleagues. The focus we have is on the team, and I can tell you, I talk to my caucus colleagues every single day, and we have complete confidence in Christian Freeland as a finance minister. You know, so this, these whispers in the shadows, and that's what they are, um, take them for what they're worth. It's like listening to talk radio, sports radio. You've got all kinds of interesting ideas, but this person beside me, Christian Freeland, has done a great job, and there isn't a single person in my caucus who would uh, say anything to the uh, contrary. So you see that. You saw how she turned away, then the reporter asked the second question, and Freeland remembered, oh, wait, i got to say something first. And then this guy on unbidden cue just switched spots with her to make this prepared statement. He compared the entire Canadians worrying about it to some trades with the Toronto Maple Leafs and talk radio where you might have interesting ideas. Might be a little bit out of touch there, but people do podcasts now, not talk radio so much. However, I can't expect him to understand that because he was just trying to make he was trying to make you think that he has um, confidence in Christian Freeland, but Canada doesn't. The question is why? What are you talking about, with Canadians who think that you should be ch taken out of your position? And it's the Canadians that you need to be talking to, not each other. But see, that's the point. That's the liberal mindset. They don't care what you think. They only care what they think. They feel like now they've been elected. There's nothing you can do to stop them. And they don't care what your opinion is. It's no different than the guy down in Venezuela. He doesn't care what your opinion is. He's just going to continue to do what he's going to do. And they're going to just try and destroy everything that they can get their hands on. But don't worry. There was one more question from a reporter, which I think is interesting to listen to. So let's have a listen to that. Canada has begun to shift its policy toward avoiding a recession as consumer spending is weak and the unemployment rate has grown a full percentage point in a year. What is your response to the central bank's growing concerns about Canada's economic performance? Yeah, uh, thanks for the question. Um, as I said in my remarks, we as a government really recognize the pressures that Canadians are facing. We recognize the pressure that high inflation put on Canadians, on Canadian families, and we recognize the pressure that Canadians have been facing from high interest rates. And that's why a central element of our government's economic policy has been about putting policies in place that create the conditions that allow inflation to go down so that interest rates can come down to lift that pressure off of Canadians and Canadian families. So you heard the reporter ask her, what are you doing about the, the worry that the central bank has over the recession? And she did whatever that gobbledygook that came out of her mouth. I mean, I didn't hear a straight answer out of her at all. We're putting policies in place that make things policies so that everything can be lighter. We've been hearing the same old story, the same old song and dance since the lockdown, how it's all going to be better sometime tomorrow. It's all coming around the bend. It's it checks in the mail. Don't worry about it. But let's be straightforward. Nobody, the, they made that announcement and food prices are through the roof. I keep an eye on these kinds of things. Food prices have gone up. I mean, I've seen bags of chips, $5. What used to be, you know, three for eight now is now $15 for three of them. It's almost double the cost for a bag of potato chips. How can people afford to have that? So people will stop to buy that. That'll hurt sales and that'll ripple out across. And I just use chips as an example because without, um, because junk food and luxury food is always a strong indicator of the overall fiscal position. People don't buy it unless they can afford it. So they'll start to cut back on those first. And why they're up to $5 is just only an indication of the carbon tax, right? And you'll note that Christy Freeland doesn't mention the impact of the carbon tax on any of the ways that we're living. You'll note that she ignored the fact that the woman said that um, unemployment is up. You'll note that she ignored the fact that she mentioned housing sales are down at the same time that Christy Freeland is trying to convince everybody, all, all first-time home buyers, to sign a 30-year mortgage at 4.5%. So I don't know that Christia Freeland is necessarily paying attention. I think that this was all just some theater that exploded in her face because she, they're not making any sense, right? That's the problem when you put people who are not qualified in place. They don't have any, there's no qualification to, to pull them out.
anyway, it just looks to me like Christy Freeland doesn't have a single solitary clue what she's talking about. And I think that this announcement was a desperate ploy to convince people who don't know any better to sign a mortgage so that the banks will have uh, some indication that the economy is bouncing back. But the economy is not bouncing back. The economy is simply not bouncing back. There's, the rents are higher. Housing starts are down in Ontario, which is easily the worst indicator that you can have. I mean, a lot of people live in southern Ontario. A lot. And the idea that we're going to have nobody having new housing starts in that province is a indication that the systems that the federal government is trying to make you believe are working are not working. Buying a condo when you're... Condos are for people who are retiring or, you know, young urbanites. They're not for people who... You know, you can be sure that there's no four bedroom condominiums that you're going to be buying for the rest of your life. You'll simply say to your spouse, Hey, let's get a house. Of course it's Toronto and they don't have the, the mass transit in place, which is really something that they should have been tackling, but they got distracted by other people's messages. Anyway, I just wanted to fill you in on the lunacy that's coming out of Ottawa now. And that a lot of this is lining up for the like the Liberal Party is about to implode, right? They're about to start to tear one another to pieces. They, some of them want Trudeau out. Some of them want Freeland out. None of them seem to want Mark Carney at all, anywhere near the argument. But he's in with their upper echelons. It's going to fall into who has who and, and who's camp, which is bad for me and you because if, for, if they got another year to go and they're all going to be giving each other deals that they made, you know, back channel and back, back uh, backroom deals so they're not going to care what you and i had to say even more even more anyway that'll make for interesting coverage all right i'm going to wrap here i want to thank you all for listening i'll talk to you next time